Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Manoj Gunsi. I'll be the moderator for today's webcast, Advanced API Monitoring for Delivering Connected Digital Experiences. You can find links to the references made during this webcast on the resources console of your screen. Should you have any questions, please feel free to post them anytime in the Q&A console. In the last few webcasts, we talked about the increasing importance of APIs in enterprise digital landscape and why many companies are now treating APIs as products, but not one-off projects. We heard from companies like Walgreens and Telstra how managing APIs as products helped them completely transform their businesses by creating innovative customer experiences. Today, in the same context, we will go one step further and learn about API monitoring and its importance in delivering connected digital experiences. With that, I would like to welcome our speaker, Pritpal Bogle, Product Manager at Google. Pritpal has over 20 years of experience in architecting innovative technology solutions for enterprises across several industries. Welcome, Pritpal. Thanks, Manoj. Super excited to be here. Uh, thanks for joining, folks. Uh, we have a power-packed agenda. Really, really excited to talk about our new API monitoring capabilities. So today, we'll be walking you through you know, how businesses are really overcoming challenges from an operational perspective. We'll talk about some of the limitations of how some of the existing synthetic monitoring tools which are available in the market don't fill the gap. We'll actually walk you through what Apigee's API monitoring solution is, and we'll do a live demo followed by some Q&A. As we talk to many businesses, they are under a lot of pressure to become digital. What that really means is they really have to transact their capabilities using APIs. If you look at a traditional enterprise, they have a lot of IP locked into silos in terms of data. But many of them are legacy sources which need to be enabled as curated APIs so it can really deliver the connected experiences that are important from their perspective to deliver to their partners, the consumers, and their employees. As API programs kick off for many of these enterprises, API downtimes can become very, very costly. They can impact revenue, customer experience, but also more importantly, have a big impact on your overall brand value. As enterprises are maturing in, in how they work with APIs, and you know they cater to a lot of different kinds of users, the application developer is a very important entity in the entire mix. They are the developers who are actually going to deliver these connected experiences to the entire ecosystem, which includes partners, employees, and consumers. But the ops team has a big task. They are actually responsible for ensuring that the underlying APIs are available, are responsive. Obviously, this, praise, this puts a lot of pressure on all the operations team. So what are some of the things that the ops teams really care about? Well, A, because APIs are the way enterprises are doing business, they want to be able to make sure that they can monitor APIs in near real time. That is not enough. Once they're monitoring, if there are any kind of issues with the APIs, they want to be able to be proactive, identify the issue in the APIs even before the customers do so they can react to it. And more importantly, once they have identified what the issues are, they need all the tools at their disposal to be able to quickly diagnose what the issues are and mitigate any of these uh, from happening in the future. So let's take a peek at what does the ops, what do the ops team do today? Well, they do have access to certain tools available in the market. So in many cases, we have seen customers using traditional application performance monitoring tools, which are not really purpose-built for API monitoring, but they're still able to keep a tab on, you know, is the API erroring out? Is it having high latency? In the recent past, you've seen a, a surgence of API monitoring tools, which are a little bit more purpose-built towards trying to uh, monitor the health of the API. And in some cases, enterprises have actually went and uh, built their own custom monitoring tools. But the basic issue with these kind of tools is that they are synthetic in nature. 
they do what we call as black box API monitoring. What do I mean by that? Well, of course, they would know that the API call is failing. Of course, there's an error thrown by the API, or perhaps the API is actually taking a long time, so the latency is higher. But they don't have the insight into well, what's happening inside the box, right? What is causing that error? Why did the latency go up? And more importantly, that gives them the ability uh, for them to be just know things from the, uh, from the outside, but they can't really drill down quickly to be able to diagnose. So as you have, as you have seen, Apigee has a full life cycle, comprehensive, market-leading API management platform as for leading industry analysts. And the API platform powers the API program for many of our successful customers with mission-critical uh, mission APIs. As a platform, it's obviously available on the cloud for different providers. You can also deploy the same software on premises. It has a highly scalable and purpose-built runtime with several out-of-the-box policies to be able to power all kinds of APIs. As you go up the layer, it has the mediation engine, which provides all the bells and whistles for you to be able to transformation and, and accommodate uh, several other kind of API use cases. The developer ecosystem is a very important piece of the entire platform. This is where the app developers, who are really the, the entity which essentially consume the APIs that you are building and providing, have access to things like a developer portal, an API catalog, clean, easy API documentation so they can really uh, work with the API. The API analytics capability has, has come of age and many of our customers really derive a lot of value out of it, especially when they're trying to keep a tab on what's really happening with the entire API program, whether it is from an operational perspective to get access to a lot of different metrics around API performance, the amount of traffic, errors, latency, et cetera, but also business metrics, right? So for digital companies, if you're tracking, you know, my API program, a product manager needs to know, well, how, what's the health of my API in terms of adoption? Are developers engaging with that? Are different partners really driving traffic towards that? All those metrics become very important. Although the API analytics platform has been very, very useful, it is purpose built for trending analytics. So today, we are introducing Apigee API monitoring, which was announced as beta in our very recently concluded Google Next conference, which adds a slew of different near real-time API monitoring capabilities. It gives you complete visibility into the entire API call chain, and more importantly, gives you the tools to be able to investigate errors very rapidly and set up contextual alerts, and more importantly, take some very, very much needed informed decisions and actions. So let's speak into this a little bit more. So what is Apigee's API monitoring all about? Well, at a very high level, it helps operational teams increase the API availability for their developers, customers, and partners. This capability is very deeply integrated into the Apigee Edge platform. That's a very important point, because through that, we're able to provide contextual insights into the API performance, and more importantly, help our customers quickly diagnose issues and then facilitate remedial actions for business continuity. It really enforces the, the monitor, investigate, and act paradigm, and we'll walk you through what that is. Apigee's API monitoring gives you a very broad spectrum view into the entire API call chain. And what I mean by that is, if you look at the very top, you're very quickly able to uh, see where the issue is. So this gives you a very quick access to the entire impact radius. Whether the issue is really occurring through an API that you may have just released on your backend, uh, maybe perhaps a new version, maybe that's causing higher latency, or perhaps it could be the API developer who's working with a new version of the API proxy, but has introduced one or two policies which may be causing that error. And although that is fine, 
many of our customers, you know, also very deeply care about, well, that's great. I can get access and insight into that kind of information. But what about the consumers of the API? Is there a way for me to be able to determine which specific key partners or which key apps are the ones which are really affected by this error? So Apigee's API monitoring gives you this broad spectrum insights into all facets of the entire API, whether it's backend service, whether any issue is occurring in the platform, within the API proxy, or even on the consumer side of the uh, equation. As I spoke before, Apigee's API monitoring is deeply embedded into the platform, and it offers tools to be able to monitor, investigate, and act on all kinds of issues. Obviously, it leverages a lot of Google goodness. So some of the technologies mentioned out here really give the API monitoring the scale, the, the ability for it to be able to offer results uh, very, very quickly so customers can, can act on those. Let's talk a little bit about integrated monitoring. This is a very important point. As I mentioned, many of our customers today rely on synthetic monitoring tools. And if you really examine how these tools work, let's imagine a quick scenario out here. Of course, you've plugged in your synthetic monitoring tool and you're monitoring what happens to the API. So it can become aware of any errors in the API. Perhaps there are higher latencies, but that's not enough. It needs to then go and rely on two factors. It has to rely on the fact that perhaps the API developer has configured the right kind of logging policy so it can log to your logging system. Well, why would you need that? Because if you can only monitor an API from the, from the outskirts, you have to go to the logging subsystem and figure out, well, what really happened inside of that API. So now you have to rely on a separate system. There is an additional learning curve, and this aspect of correlating the point of where the issue is the onus lies on you as a customer. With the white box monitoring, which is what Apigee's API monitoring is about, API monitoring is deeply integrated into the entire stack, which means you have the same exact user interface that you've been used to in the past. We've just added a new tab out there, which I'll cover in the demo, but that gives you all the screens, all the ability for you to be able to drill down and correlate the root cause of why the API is failing, whether it's a higher error rate that suddenly creeps up or whether it's high latencies that have come into the mix. So precision diagnosis is, is very important. When we talk to several of our customers, it becomes very clear that as their API programs are gaining traction and they are relying increasingly on the API platform to deliver, it becomes very important to be able to correlate and figure out the impact radius. So what we mean by that is, it's one thing to know that the API is broken, but it's another and completely different scale to imagine, well, where all in that call chain is that specific thing breaking up? Is it just API in the API proxy? Can I quickly figure out whether my backends are failing? In many cases, we have actually seen customers who work with us and report errors and say, oh, geez, my, my, my APIs are kind of not performing well. But, you know, they later on figured out it was just a new version of the backend API, which was promoted to production and suddenly had high latency, right? It'll be good for them to know that the issue was in some of the backend APIs. Well, with API's API monitoring, they can know that. And this prevents a lot of downtime because they can quickly react and upgrade or roll back whatever the right uh, action is to take on their specific uh, backends. And more importantly, spend time in you know, ensuring that their customers are up and running. The other aspect which continues to come up is around uh, the developer application issue. In fact, this is one of the key things which came up during uh, our alpha program as well. Many customers asked of us that, hey, we really would like to know, it's great to figure out the impact radius on our side, but I really want to know which kind of customers are getting infected, right? So if you can give 
some kind of insights into which developer apps are failing. So we have several key customers, and it's very important for us, uh, especially in situations where customers have to keep a track of different SLAs for different tiers of customers, this becomes a very important capability. And this is not something that you can outsource to anyone else. So let's talk a little bit about the contextual insights. So, so far, we covered the two facets of the monitor, the investigate, and let's talk about the act part of it. So one of the singular important requirements that we hear from customers again and again is, how do I get notified when things are broken? To me, that is the most important. I Notify me on the channel of my choice. Once I have a notification of something is broken, using that alert, I want to be able to take the right action. And the right action should not only tell me, you know, what's broken, but also tell me more importantly, where it's broken, and give me the correlated information within a few clicks. That is very, very powerful, because you can take a look at a lot of the other tools available in the market today, they will tell you, yes, your API is broken, but a lot of time in our experience is spent by customers, and we hear this, uh, hear this from them again and again, I need to know where it's broken and in what places, and let me quickly correlate. So using the contextual insights, we actually have the ability to be able to drill down into specific areas of the, uh, the call chain, and we'll walk you through that in a, in a quick demo. The insights give you some very critical diagnostic information so you can remediate things faster. And we have actually integrated the alerting capability, the different channels that you can be alerted on and are providing that through email, Slack, PagerDuty, and then supporting webhooks. Really using webhooks, you can pretty much plug this thing into any kind of system that you would want to be uh, uh, notified on. Now, this is not where this thing ends, right? What we're going to about to show you is something that's available in data today. But let's spend a few seconds, a few minutes out here on what is the power of this platform? How far can you really take this act to? So imagine that because this, these capabilities are built into the platform and integrated, imagine that you are running through a scenario where you have a catastrophic failure on your backend. Let's say many of your backend APIs are just failing because your infrastructure is going down or you have major issues with a recent upgrade. Imagine a scenario where, as a good citizen, you have leveraged the Apigee API platform, and you have enabled the right level of spike risk policies on each and every API, right? Because you want to ensure in a given uh, normal day, 100 TPS is what my backend can handle, right? Now let's imagine that your backends are failing because of catastrophic failure, and it can barely keep up with 10 transactions per second. Right? Let's quickly imagine what would the process look like for a, a typical diagnostic staff. Well, the first thing would be you would want to go and put some gating factors in the API platform itself. So you may open up a change management ticket and say, let's go and configure or reconfigure the spike arrest policy as an example to be, you know, throttled down to about 10 transactions per second. In the time that it takes for you to go through the change management, damage would already have been done. There's probably a lot of uh, traffic which was flowing through. And once you do that, hopefully you recover. You have to go back and reset all the settings back again to the right value. So the direction where we are thinking of taking this product to is, how about if we had control for the operators so that when things are going wrong, they have the ability using a few clicks to be able to throttle down traffic to one or more entire environment so they can manage and, uh, and, and you know, remediate things in a much more faster way. They have more control over how they can take actions from the platform to be able to really control and 
you know, increase, uh, lower the response time with which they can act uh, and react to certain kinds of errors. So this is one example of what the vision is. There are obviously many other intelligent things that are being built on in this platform. Another example of that would be, you know, how you could essentially uh, take the recommendation that we provide around the API traffic. So as an example, because we see API traffic flowing in through your org, you know, you guys have a good sense of what is normal and what's not. Using some of these uh, capabilities, you could come up with recommendations on, hey, we see a drop in your API traffic on this environment of more than X percent, right? Maybe that's, a, maybe that's an area of interest for you guys to be aware of. So capabilities like recommendation. Another one that I can think about is, think about, uh, you know, canary deployment. You could also have the ability to leverage rules and tightly compose a multi-phase canary deployment for your API proxies over a period of time and let you better control which versions of APIs do you roll out over a period of time. So these are some examples of where we plan to take this product and give more power in the hands of our customers for three things. Be able to respond to issues faster, being able to give them tools to be able to diagnose in real time, and then also mitigate errors and issues as soon as they occur. Okay, so with this, let me go into a, a quick demo. So I'm going to be demoing this thing in real time, so I'm going to just uh, pray that the demo gods are with us today. So assuming you're able to see my screen, which you should be at this point in time. All right. So right now, imagine I am the ops admin. I am the ops person on call today, and I would like to know what's really happening with the API, uh, with the APIs that are, you know, powering a lot of mission critical customer use cases. So again, I could have gotten this alert on any channel of my choice, including Slack, including uh, Page of duty, but in this case, there's an alert which has come up on email. So let's take a look at what's really in that alert. So I get a quick notification around, hey, something is wrong with the, uh, with the benchmark API, and it is throwing some 5xx errors. It also gives me a playbook out here which tells me you know, if there are prescribed ways within my organization, like a wiki page or maybe a, a diagnostic manual, I can really just click on that and visit that so I know what to do to fix it. But more importantly, it gives me a snapshot of what kind of violations and when and in which region it occurred. So I'm really curious now. Let's go take a look at what's behind that alert. So with this, we actually are taken directly and contextually to what we call as the investigate view. Let's spend a few minutes on this view. As the ops admin, I can get right away the, uh, the status of what's really happening with these APIs, mm -hmm. with this particular API that I get alerted on. Uh, if I hover over the condition details, it tells me exactly what the error, uh, what what errors happened out here. So in this case, the alert was set up to fire if there was an error rate of 5xx, so any kind of 5xx error, greater than 50%, I want to be notified. And that's exactly what happened. It also tells me out here which specific API proxy was affected, and more importantly, mm -hmm. the specific region that the error is coming from. So this is great. And as I mentioned, you can go out here and visit the playbook, uh, which is nothing but kind of a prescriptive guide, prescriptive guide of, hey, what, as an ops uh, person on call, should I really be doing if I encounter this error, right? So you can really automate that. Let's scroll down here to something very, very important. 
Now, this is one feature which during the, uh, the alpha phase of the product, uh, you know, customers were, were really very eager to, to have this two-dimensional analytical capability in front of them so they can diagnose things better. So let's take a look at what these views really are all about. So we have three different views out here in which you have two-dimensional comparisons of different kinds of variables. So in this case, we have fall code versus time. Again, as you can see from the dropdown, you can really configure these three to be whatever you want it to be so you can compare different dimensions. Let's take a look at fall code over time. So in this case, we know that there was an error in the API proxy, right? That's great. That's the first step. But now we know the impact radius of that error, right? Was it happening because of one API policy? Is this spread across potentially others as well? So if I click on one of these boxes, it tells me a lot of contextual information on the right panel. So if I go out here, I can see that the spike rest violation happened across this time frame, and obviously I can see the number of uh, times it happened. It tells me out here the environment. It also tells me the specific proxy, and in which case, which target was the one which, uh, the which proxy target combination caused it. And this is important because, as you know, an API proxy can talk to multiple targets. So right away I know that here are some of the key attributes which are leading up to this error. If you happen to be an Apigee DN customer, you can also see if you, if you have your API proxies spread across, let's say, US East and US West, you would actually get that breakdown. This is very important because for many enterprise customers, they really want to know, are the APIs failing all over? Is this impact radius much more concentrated in one region versus the other? This is some very useful information, something which a synthetic API monitoring tool will never be able to give you. Lastly, if you have a specific developer app or a bunch of them which are getting affected by these errors, you can actually see the breakdown and in this case, the count of what, what, what's happening with different kinds of developer apps. So this is, this is very, very powerful. But this is not where it stops. As an operator, it's great that I got the alert. I was able to take a look at some quick forensics around you know, the fall code or a time spread. But I would really like to take a look at the logs. So the logs are going to tell me well, what really happened at that point in time? So if I click on view error logs, it right away gives me all the logs which are captured, broken down by either the source, whether it is from the proxy, the target, or caused by the platform, and broken down by the right error code mix. Let's just expand this one really quickly. Now this gives me some much, some much needed insight around the timestamp around which this occurred, what the specific request was, the request length, the status, the response time, and some pretty interesting information about where exactly in the API proxy did this thing happen, right? Which policy or which fault flow, if you would, really kicked this thing off. Now, one of the other things that I'm going to just highlight is this request message ID. This is another important attribute that many of our customers use as a identifier of that particular request. Why is this important? Because many a time they will have to use a message logging policy within the platform to then go push this uh, message ID and any pertinent logging information into the logging system of your choice. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. You have correlated and integrated logs available within couple clicks. Uh, that's what I mean by the power of the platform. In future releases, we are also planning on taking some trace snapshots and making it available so that you have a complete step-by-step -step breakdown for a few set of API calls, which uh, steps took what time. Again, 
All of this is possible because the API monitoring solution is integrated right into the stack. So great, I looked at how we were able to very quickly, from an alert which came to me in my email, look at the high level alert, go through the uh, analysis for fault code over time, look at the suspected cause, review the error logs, and very quickly, you know, come to our determination. But here's another interesting feature which we've added to the solution. And this is something which has been asked by many of our customers. So imagine I just happen to be on call duty today. But at some point in time, my shift is going to end. And someone else is going to be on schedule. How do I really ensure that just because I got alerted of this and become, became aware of the situation, can I use some tools in place so that people who would be coming on call schedules don't have to go through the same cycle of investigation? Turns out there's exactly a feature for that. So from here, you can actually create a custom report. And this custom report, as you know, uh, and you may have used the custom report feature in APG Edge before, if you're an existing APG Edge customer. This custom report integration actually gives you all the values pre-built inside of it, pre-selected, along with the right side of filter criteria. Usually this is something which customers have asked us repeatedly again and again. I would love to have a custom report, but I don't want to go in out there and remember what was the exact fault code. With this single point integration, give you that capability. All you have to do out here is change the name of the report if you like to and hit save, right? So that integration has been immensely helpful for many customers and I'll just quickly show an example of a few different custom reports. And in out here, if I was to run a report, you can see uh, that I can get some more interesting analytics around uh, specific uh, spreads of different response time, uh, target response time, et cetera. But more importantly, we see how things can be uh, you know, correlated very, very quickly. Awesome. So from here, let's quickly go into the, the timeline view. Okay, so from the timeline view, we actually get the ability to see what has really transpired over a period of time for this particular API proxy. And I can get some deep insights. Again, I can make it up to last 24 hours, different time periods. This starts to give me a lot of interesting insights into uh, the API proxy. If I go back to the API monitoring dashboard, now this is particularly useful when I know that some of my performance team, some of my teams are doing some performance testing, right? Or I may not be alerted, but I'm just trying to keep a tab on the health of the API program. In the overview report, overview dashboard, I get a bunch of interesting information around total traffic, error rates, and then top proxy latencies, including some of the alerts which have been fired. If I click on view all, actually gives me the ability to see, you know, some more information for specific kind of uh, API proxies. Let's click on benchmark in valid one. You can see some correlated information out here. If I click on show, it tells me which backends are causing the most amount of errors or in this case latency. I can get some very interesting breakdown right away on this panel, trends, and then I can also get access to error logs if I wanted to. Now let's, let's switch over to one of the features which actually has been demanded of us by our customers many a times. What happens is API proxies are great, but many a times there are a set of related API proxies or targets which really matter the most to a business unit. And for that exact reason, we have introduced a feature called collections. Collections gives you, the ops team, the ability to create a collection of a set of related API proxies or targets in this case. Let's select API proxies. 
And then I can add a bunch of different API proxies out here, which I want to monitor as a unit. This is very important because we have heard repeatedly that hey, these set of API proxies are the ones we want to keep a track of for one line of business. Or perhaps we want to be able to, you know, just take a set of these proxies because they are for tier one partner versus tier two partners. You can do that. For this purpose, I'll actually just walk you through a collection that I've created out here called the consumer LOB. In this case, I have selected a couple of API proxies. That's great. But now let's talk about how you can configure an alert. So if I go to the alert section right here, you have the ability to go in, create an alert, you give it a name, you can select a specific condition, let's say status code, and give it 5xx, give it rate, let's say 50%. Now you can either select this thing, or you can have the uh, condition data out here show you, let's add a dimension here, let's select invalid one, okay. And of this, Hide this condition data tab actually tells me very quickly what is the right level of alert threshold that I should set. If I set something too low, it will maybe fine grained very noisy. I can use these heuristics to be able to quickly keep a track of what's the right level. But that's not where it ends. You can not only set alert at the API proxy or the target level, but more importantly, you can set an alert on a collection of API proxies. That is very powerful. So we can monitor a group of related API proxies, which will give me the ability to you know, keep track of this set of proxies and get alert on any condition. Obviously from the alert tab, you can go and create a report. And then as I mentioned, we support different kinds of notification channels. You have email, Slack, PagerDuty, and pretty much anything that supports a webhook, which many systems do today. So this pretty much covers a lot of the different uh, places that you were going to get notified on. On the alert history, you can also very quickly visualize the different kind of alerts that have already been uh, fired, so you can get a sense of you know how uh, how you know things have been, and you know go into any of those links and uh, get a quick peek into what's been happening. So we covered. A lot of surface area today. We demonstrated, we started from the journey of how an alert was fired and how you came into uh, the specific definition. You saw the investigate view with some powerful tools to correlate many things out there. You were able to look at the logs. You can also create custom reports from there. Then we also very quickly examined the over, uh, the over high level view and spoke about how you could create alerts. With this, let's talk about how many of our customers, and we had a very, very successful alpha program, have ascertained value from uh, the APM monitoring. In fact, uh, they have helped us shape the direction of this product, and more importantly, they've been able to leverage a lot of the tools and a lot of the widgets that we just demoed to be able to be more proactive and track errors before their customers became aware of those kind of errors and were able to better manage their API SLA. And again, we are very confident that this new API monitoring capability can really help you stay on top of the health of APIs and, and take care of your, uh, your digital initiatives. So we, as I mentioned, just announced the beta if you're an existing Apigee Edge customer, this capability should be turned on for you in your orgs. If you're not an Apigee Edge customer, uh, feel free to sign up for a trial org where you can uh, get access to Apigee Edge. In order to get access to APM monitoring, feel free to talk to your sales team and they can figure out an org where they can uh, get it turned on for you. We are uh, planning on you know, going GA within the next uh, few months. So really, really excited for this capability. And with this, I will turn it back over to Manoj. Thank you, Prince Bhav. 
To learn more about Apigee API monitoring, please download the detailed data sheet. An API product microsite is also available for you to read strategies, testimonials, and success stories related to this concept. Links to all these resources are also available in your resource module. Uh, let's take the questions. We have David Boza sent across questions yesterday, well in advance of the webcast. So let's go through those questions first. So is the data generated in custom reports real time? Yes. So so the the so the data which is coming in custom reports is really built on some of the predicates which were selected. Traditionally, custom reports have been capturing information which is more trending over time, but the data which is aggregated obviously is not going to be in real time or in on, or near real time. It's going to have a slight delay, but the feed into it with some of the console that you saw from API monitoring, that information is piped to you within a minute of it occurring, right? So custom reports traditionally will capture aggregated information, which will take some time, uh, but the dashboard that we covered today they offer you that information in near real time as we uh, as so you get aware of those uh, situations where it's higher errors or higher latency as soon as they happen. Yeah, uh, we have a lot of a uh, lot of people ask the same question: uh, When will this functionality be be available for private cloud? That's a great question, and I know we do have a lot of customers here on private cloud uh, today. So this. Uh, API monitoring capability is currently available in AppGH Cloud. Uh, once uh, we go GA with it, we are going to look into how can we provide these capabilities to our on-premises customers. But today it is available in the cloud for customers who want to try it out. Okay. Um, and there are quite a few questions regarding integration with uh, other ticketing systems. So is it, does it have integration with ServiceNow and can it raise an uh, incident in ServiceNow? So that's, that's a great question. As you know, APG is a full lifecycle purpose-built platform. Um, you can make API calls, including API calls to ServiceNow and log certain uh, key metrics which are of uh, importance to you. There's also support for webhooks. So if there is an ability for you to be able to specify the webhook at the time of the alert, mm -hmm. that information could be pushed out there several different ways. You should also look at uh, you know, ways and means to just package this information and push it into not only service now, but many of the systems through webhooks uh, that you can do today. Okay. There, there are specific questions for Remedy as well. I believe the same answer applies to Remedy. Too. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, there's another question from Nitin. Uh, can all this information from API monitoring, can it be logged into Splunk? So, so remember, you do have a message logging policy today in the platform that can be used to log uh, information uh, directly to Splunk if you like to. But that's typically logging information. But uh, let me take a stab at answering this, uh, which will also answer one of the other questions which are out there around, hey, can I get this error log data, et cetera, uh, through an API instead of the monitoring UI, right? The reason I'm trying to take a stab at that question is kind of answers both those questions together. So APG in typical fashion has always been an API-first company. And what we mean by that is any capability that we really release in terms of UI dashboard that you reviewed today has an underlying API. So yes, you do have access to that data through a first class API where you can get access to metrics and logs and take that information and push it to whatever your logging system of choice is. That's one option. Or the other option is that within the policy, within the APG API proxy, you can include a message logging policy to write to Splunk or any other logging system for that matter of fact. There is another question from Arvind. Uh, how does Marketplace different from Catalog? I believe this question is more related to APG Edge. Correct. So I think let's let's get to the monitoring questions and we can okay. answer this one offline. Okay. Um, how, how do you efficiently identify where the issue is occurring and how do we rectify it? Great question. Now, I think that is exactly what this tool brings to bear. If you look at what we showed in the demo today, it was not only about getting notified that there was an error in the API proxy, but also within a few clicks, as you saw today from the investigate view, you were able to get a very broad spectrum view of the impact radius of the entire error. 
uh, within the next couple of clicks, you're able to see some trending information and also look at all the logs which are supporting that. So really, this tool kind of brings to bear the correlation, the uh, uh, forensic uh, capability and precision diagnostics bundled into an integrated UI, which is part of the same FPG as interface that our customers are used to. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting question from Sendal. Uh, if a proxy has multiple backends, can the product uh, alert if any of the targets is failing? Absolutely. You can actually set up alerts at the proxy level, at the individual target level, or at the proxy level so that no matter which target it routes to, uh, you can get alerted. And as I also mentioned, uh, you also have the ability from the collection feature, if you think there are particular set of targets which are important for you to monitor as a unit, you can do that. You can go and create a collection of those individual targets and then set an alert in which case, if any of the targets go over a specific threshold, you would actually get that data come out and you would get the error uh, notified and alerted on the channel of your choice. Sure. Uh, another question from Arvind is, are additional overheads introduced potentially to allow the API monitoring to work? So great question. So we believe it induces extremely low overhead. And uh, this is something which we as a company have been doing this for the past few years internally. And all the information is captured asynchronously, doesn't impact your API traffic. It's very minimal overhead when we just eke out that information and then have a separate monitoring subsystem which is highly optimized highly efficient, and the streams of information through the API into the UI uh, in near real time. Another question is, is API monitoring similar or alternative to test.apg.com? So test.apg.com, as you know, was a lab product. It was meant for uh, what we call as external uh, monitoring to different probes available all different parts of the, uh, of the world. Again, those kind of tools were meant to kind of just probe and ping API and see how they were. But this is fundamentally integrated into the platform. It has the ability to tell you not that an API is taking longer time or throwing an error, but tells you where the error is and what's causing it more responsibly. So this is a much more powerful set of capabilities integrated into the platform, along with a public API that you can access if you don't prefer a UI and the ability for you to get alerted in, 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 in real time. Sure. Um, we'll take one last question in the interest of time. Uh, this question is from Prashant. Can we set alerts at shared flows or books for a particular org or environment? So really, if you think about shared flow and flow books, these are nothing but reusable components. So let's say if you have a few different policies that need to be reused, right? Essentially, they become part of an API proxy at the runtime. So a shared flow is manufactured itself. If you have an API proxy with, let's say, four policies, and a shared flow is used in, which has two policies, that really becomes part of your API proxy chain. So in this case, once you set the alert of the API proxy, it would be covered. A shared flow technically doesn't have any existence outside of an API proxy, right? So essentially, you would set an alert at the API proxy level or a collection of those, set the right conditions, and then be alerted on it. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Uh, I believe that is all the questions we are able to answer at this time. Please don't forget to register for our upcoming webcast, Integrating Enterprise Apps and Data with API on August 23rd, and the Virtual API Jam on August 13th. Once again, thank you all for joining us, and enjoy the rest of your